Hello, my name is Biljana and I'm the lecturer on this course on language and diplomacy. The course primarily addresses how is language used and how is it best put to use in the context of diplomacy. As diplomats, we absolutely need to be wordsmiths because the medium of our profession is language. And so this course aims to show participants how best to master various aspects of language that are central to effective communication in diplomacy. Some of the subjects that we cover are, for instance, ambiguity, persuasion, uh, securing agreements, building relationships, framing arguments, public speaking. We start off by looking at language as a form of action. Many people believe that language and action are at opposite ends of the pole, and proverbs such as all talk, no action, suggest as much. But actually, language is the way in which we conduct affairs, not only in diplomacy, but in business and in many other areas of life as well. When in United Nations Security Council resolutions, for instance, the initial verb of any clause says considering, regarding, remembering, decides, advises, etc., those verbs are performing actions, and those actions are often legally binding. That is how language is seen to perform actions. In addition, we look at other subjects fundamental to diplomacy. Building relationships, for instance, how the language of courtesy, how the notion of face space, and how the inclusion of others are essential to finding common ground and creating agreement. Securing agreement is another subject that we cover. How addressing the individual, finding common ground and expanding the circle of inclusion are all activities that have linguistic reflexes. And once we master the language, we're better able to perform those particular activities. Other subjects that we touch upon that are absolutely essential to the study of diplomacy are persuasion. And here we recast the traditional Greek rhetorical notions of pathos, logos, and ethos into soft, hard, and smart persuasion. We look at examples of speeches and texts in order to find out what are the components that made that particular speech successful, given the audience it was addressed at. And we also look at the way in which a global audience has forced changes in the way that speakers address their subject. Finally, we look at ambiguity. We distinguish between linguistic ambiguity and constructive ambiguity, and then conclude with a lecture on implicit communication and the unsaid. Whether you're a diplomat, a politician, a journalist, or some other form of opinion shaper, this course will be useful to you in identifying those linguistic skills which will make you a proficient communicator.